takes us quite nicely on to our um to our next um part of the show which is a reading from sorrel and black cake sorrel and black cake was an original play um written for the geraldine connor foundation back in 2018 um, and it's actually funded through the heritage lottery and performed by the young people who are part and parcel of the foundation and also some visitors that were also part of performing that and researching the whole idea of the Windrush generation. It is a story of Windrush about home departure arrival and a new generation setting up, setting up home in England. The narrative is around a protagonist called Miss Letty who has died and her family gather at the home to make preparations for her funeral. They remember her life while friends come to celebrate her departure. We're gonna have a section of this reading by the wonderful Musa Fing. And the section of this is really about how um, Miss Letty tells her story through a letter that she's written to her granddaughter, Anika. The important part of Sorrel and Black Cake, the, it, at the heart of this narrative of Sorrel and Black Cake is what we call strangers with blood ties. Some people are not aware of that Windrush generation, that migration of people that came to England. Some of them left their family ties back home in the Caribbean. And not just parents, but some of them left their children back in the Caribbean and made their way to made their way to Britain to settle with the intention of then sending for their children. There are lots of terminologies used in regard to these children that were left home. Some of them called some of them are called barrel children because their parents would collect these collect goods and send barrels back home with letters. Some of them would call them strangers with blood ties because they become strangers in a new landscape when they arrive to Britain and their parents have settled. Sometimes um, actually the parents are not together. And so they arrive in Britain to this new family and they become the stranger. There are children that are born in Britain. They come with this nation language of the Caribbean. They come with a lifestyle that is different to, to Britain and they're often navigating themselves. And so this, we're going to start the reading of this play with Musafing from the letter that Miss Letty writes to her granddaughter mm -hmm. to talk about her life. So we're gonna welcome um, the wonderful Musafing who is a playwright, poet. She's um, also um, an artist who has developed a program called Bread Fruit Reasoning. So can we welcome Musafing? Thank you, thank you so much. Dear Anika, I write this letter so you can remember me. And of course, with this letter is the key to my trunk, which you will find what you need to send me on to the next life. This is my story. This is my song. This is my story, my song as I remember it. So you know your Caribbean heritage and something of me. By the time you read these words, I will have passed on to meet my maker. I may have left this life, but I feel good about your future. In my time, I never held back the years. My days were always blessed and beautiful as the Sankofa bird that looks back in time. So we don't forget our past, the places we have come from, the richness of ancestry, knowing you belong. You are the future. The one who will understand the family lineage is important. The legacy of our people and why we came to work in England. I was born Letitia Evelyn Williams, 1930, and I married your grandfather, Samuel Donald Davis. 
<laughs> I was born in Penn Street, Jonestown, Kingston, uh, to Sislin Joyce Ellis and Elijah Roy Williams. I was about 18 years old when I went to work with my mother. She was a Higla woman, uh, selling all kind of things in Linstead Market. Uh, me and my sister Edna would go down to Wellington Street to the Chinese man to collect flower sacks. My mother would make sheets and bags, and she used to embroider them with flowers and birds. Yes, them time was nice. We make some money. My mother house was lovely with kitchen and bathroom and bedroom. We even hung green banana for ripe. Oh, we sell mango from country. And when we can come, we gonna party up at Ambassador Theatre. Yes, Majestic Caribbean World Theatres. All the singers would come and sing. What? Dance was so nice. Yes, we had some good times. Even when we would wash bottles and pile them up to sell to earn money so we could buy things. That is how I got my fear to sail to England. 28 pounds and 10 shillings. And I knew I was going to travel, just like my father, who I didn't see much of. He traveled to Cuba and later to Panama to work on the canals. He returned a few times with all kind of gifts. Most people work away at that time, especially after the big Atlantic hurricane in 1944. Oh, everywhere damage. So plenty of people travel for, for work elsewhere. I spend most of my time with my granny and my granddad. Them time, my granny Elise was a local herbalist woman. Mm. My grandfather, Mr. Williams, was the district doctor. The only one for miles. And he used to use some of my granny medicine for his patients because things were not so good and times were hard for so many. And he would act like he never want to use her medicine because people might say he not practicing what he learned and he doing harder things. <laughs> but my granny, she used to make all kind of medicine for the people in the country like busy tea. If you have fever, she would sore as well. Oh, I tell you, my fashion was so pretty, <laughs> especially Christmas time. What? Junk on a masquerade time in the streets. Black cake, rum cake, bun and cheese and cereal. Oh, so what's up? Juice. Oh, that time was so nice. And the best thing about staying with my granny Elise was the games and the food. Oh boy, my sister Edna would climb mango and breadfruit tree, you see. My granny used to cook up food. My granny used to cook up some food, you see. Fish and bammy. William black cake till we're fat. And the saril is my granny who showed me how to make the things in a special way. And we had so much fun playing in the cane fields, singing songs. Ah, one time, <laughs> me and my friends were singing one song. It's a little ring game. Here you how it go. All day, all night, Miriam. Down by the seaside, catching sun. The water farmer can, can sail a boat. And they hear from a can tie a goat. <laughs> Whoa, you want to see how many granny beat with till we penny? Whoa, what a thing that there. You see them songs, you can't sing so hot, but we did love them anyway. Ah, 
we love go a set up a nine night just for the food and the dancing. I remember the time when Mars Brown died and that night in the dead yard, Dinky Mini was going on. We danced, there was food and songs. Then that went on all night for the nine nights. The songs could be heard across the town. Mars Brown, up at big yard, dead old them say. And every night we run gonna dead yard. Sammy plan pisa can dung a gully. Mm hmm And he beer till he kill poor Sammy. Mm hmm Sammy dead, Sammy dead, Sammy dead do. Mm hmm Sammy dead, Sammy dead, Sammy dead do. Mm hmm And no thief, Sammy thief, make them kill him. And no thief, Sammy thief, make them kill him. But a grudge, grudgeful, yes, a grudgeful, make them kill him. Yes, a grudgeful, yes, a grudgeful, make them kill him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Master Thing. This is the 